Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic awkwardly does logic in her bedroom while there's construction going on outside. I hope it's not too distracting. This is going to be a quick video though. I'm just going to define for you what a term in a predicate language is. So recall from our previous uh, video that we had different ways of talking about objects. We had variables, we had constants, and we had functions. This is what's going to go into our definition of a term. So a term is kind of a general name for the ways in which we can talk about objects. So this is the definition. It is of the term term. And what we say is that this symbol, this is the lowercase Greek letter tau. Tau is a quantified term if it is one of the following. So just as we defined well-formed formula for propositional logic in a recursive fashion, we will define the notion of a term in predicate logic in a similar recursive fashion. So if tau is a variable, then tau is a term. So that's what we're defining. If tau is, ah, is a constant, then it is a quantified term. And it is also a term if there is an n airy function symbol f and terms tau one all the way up to tau n such that tau itself just is the result of applying that function to those n terms. That's all that there is to the definition of term. However, a little bit of, um, yeah, that's not what I wanted. Uh, a little bit of nomenclature we call variables and constants, atomic terms, and the application of a function to other terms, which may be atomic or may not be, we call that complex terms. So the idea is we start off with our variables and our constants, and then we can increasingly make them more and more complex by kind of collecting them together using functions. So let me give you, let me get out my notes. I'm going to give you just a very quick little example language and some examples of what terms would look like in that language. So let's let LQ be a quantified language containing constants j and a and a binary function f. Then j and a are atomic terms in LQ and something like f j a is a complex term. It's a complex term that has two atomic terms as input, but now that we have a complex term, we could use it as the input to the function again. So we could also have, for instance, f j, f j a is also a complex term in this language according to the definition of term that we have just given. That's basically it. We've got 
basic terms or the, or the atomic terms, which are just the variables and the constants. Then you've got complex terms, which are formed out of either atomic terms or other complex terms. We'll have a similar thing when it comes to looking at well-formed formulas. We'll first define a notion of atomic formula, and then we will define the complex formulas, which are built up out of either atomic formulas or other complex formulas. There you have it. Take care and see you later for the definition of formula.